Dear friends of men, uh, regarding our mission to Israel, come and follow me. This is our poster that shows our support for Israel and the entire Jewish nation. And this is about what we call now mission to Israel. <coughs> mission to Israel that Biafra is going to be sending 500 military training officers to Israel for military training, both as pilots and engineers. Um, you can see the logo of the Republic of Biafra and also the Biafran flag and the Israeli flag here. And you also see the United States flag, um, the, French, the Biafran flag here, yeah. and the United States again, and the Republic of Haiti is here. These are the countries that supported Biafra during the Civil War. And if you come at the end here, you'll also see the flag of Israel. Biafra is an ally to Israel and the Republic of France. France supported Biafra during the Civil War between 1967 and 1970. Um, the most important today's meeting or press conference is that the Republic of Biafra, led by the Biafra Zionist movement, is sending 500 military officers to be trained in Israel as both pilots and engineers. And I will be explaining the reason why we are taking this move. Um, it's about the security of life and property of the Biafra people. And we are aware that since Nigeria was born, that the Biafran people have not felt safe in Nigeria. And that is why we are determined that we must be safe and secure here in our country. And recently, the government of Kano State is sending 100 military officers to be trained as pilots to Jordan. And we believe that it's a threat to the survival of the Biafran people. And that's why we are going to counter the move by sending also 500 military Biafran trainees to Israel to be trained as pilots and engineers. Um, Nigeria was amalgamated in 1914 by the British. And since that time, the Biafran people have not been feeling safe in this country. The security of life and property of the Biafran people have not been safe. And that led to the civil war in 1967 to 1970, in which over 3 million Biafrans perished during that civil war. And since 1970, we have been killed almost on a daily basis by the same northern Nigerians that want to annihilate the Biafran people. We are saying no to that. And that's why the move by the northern government of sending military trainees to Jordan is a threat to us. And we are going to counter it. And that is why, if you look behind me, as I said before, these people will be going to Israel in a very short while. And that is the aim of this press conference, that the Republic of Biafra is sending military trainees to Israel. Uh, my fellow Biafran, the reason why we are making this appeal to the international community is because we feel that we are not safe in Nigeria. The Biafrans have been killed almost on a daily basis based on the fact that there is a Muslim fundamentalist called the Boko Haram in northern Nigeria. And they have been operating violently against our people. We don't have security of life in the north and that we have in the west. Our people have been massacred based because they are Biafrans and also they are Christians. And because of that reason, we feel that only the independence of Biafra will be able to guarantee the safety, the security, and the survival of the Biafran people. And we therefore call on the United Nations, <coughs> the international community, to do what exactly was done in South Sudan when the South Sudanese became independent in 2010 after a prolonged 22 years of civil war in which more than 5 million people perished the same as Biafra between 1967 and 1970 over 3 million Biafrans also perished in that civil war and that is why we are taking it very seriously to send these military trainees to Jordan and to Israel because if we do nothing between now and 2015, the people of the north might likely rise up militarily to attack and kill and maim the people of Biafra. We hereby say no to that and call on all Biafrans, living in the northern Nigeria in particular, to start thinking coming back home. Because here in Biafra, we believe that we have ample space and time and opportunity here in our country to feel safe and secure here where we can be able to build up our own country 
so that we can be able to compete with the Japanese, with the Americans, with the Europeans, as free world are doing in competing among themselves in terms of technology, economically, and socially, and also to guarantee the safety and peace of the world. I want to inform the United Nations, particularly the United States of America, as the only remaining superpower in the world, that the Biafran move to Israel is not an aggressive move. Rather, it is a defensive move. We believe that it is our best interest to feel safe and secure here in Biafra. And if we do so, that is going to harmonize the relationship between the Biafran people and their neighbors. Uh, in Nigeria, we'll always remember the neighbor to Biafra. We also have neighbors like Cameroon, like Ghana, like Cote d'Ivoire, um, Benin Republic, and Togo. These are our neighbors, which we are going to work together to make sure we secure the peace and tranquility in our region. And furthermore, I want to add about Biafran support for Israel. <coughs> we believe that the Israelis and the Jewish people have the right to live. And that is why we are also calling on the United Nations to do all they can to prevent Iran from acquiring nuclear weapons. Uh, Iran acquisition of nuclear weapons is a threat to the Israelis, it's a threat to the Jewish people, and it's also a threat to the entire Middle East and the wider world. And we, the Biafran, believe that such a threat by Iran it's also a threat to us, and that's what we call on the International, uh, International Energy Atomic Agency uh, through the auspices of the P5 plus 1 to make sure that Iran is denied the means to acquire nuclear weapons. We also call on the United States to do all it can also to prevent Iran from acquisition of nuclear weapons. And here in Africa, we also believe that Iran is responsible for most of the violence that is taking place against the Biafran people through its support of Boko Haram, and that's why we are calling on the international community to support the independence of Biafra. Biafra will be a peaceful Christian country that will not be as of any threat to anyone because we believe that if we can be able to give our people the opportunity, the economic opportunity to enhance themselves, they can be able to produce their own economic productivity which can bring peace and stability within our country and the region. Um, Nigeria also, we have been informing them that they have to leave Biafra on or before the 5th of March 2013, which they haven't done so. We repeat again the sanction against Nigeria, and that is we are imposing $5 million per day sanction against Nigeria since 5th of March 2013 for not complying with the ultimatum and order for them to quit the Republic of Biafra. And we also given them notice that by May 20, we are going to abolish the Naira and reinstate the Biafra pound which we believe will be in the best interest for the economic survival of the Biafran people. And all this in mind, we know that the world might be very, very uh, agitative for Nigeria to remain one, but it is not so because we are not feeling safe as the Biafrans in Nigeria. We feel that the Biafrans will be best left, left to be independent, as the people of South Sudan have demonstrated that they can be peaceful and uh, they can be peaceful country they are. So we are calling on the international community, um, again, the European Union. The European Union should do all it can to also support Biafra independence. We reaffirm that the Republic of Biafra will be a friendly nation to the people of the European Union, of the 27 member states of the European Union. Biafra will be a friendly state to them. And what has done, was done in Kosovo, where the, Biafrans, uh, where the Kosovans have been allowed to be independent from Serbia so must be applied here to the Biafran people to be independent out of Nigeria. And in so doing, it will create an environment whereby our people will feel safe. For first and foremost, will feel safe in this part of the world because we believe here since 1970 when the war ended that the Biafran people have never felt safe as people that are enjoying the same benefit of being in their own country. You know, in summary of this, I repeat again that the Biafran people will be sending 500 military trainees to Israel. And this is the counter the move by the northern government of sending 100 military officers to be trained by the Royal Jordanian Air Force as pilots and engineers. So the Biafran people are going to do the same, sending them to Israel. We have informed the United States of America, we have also informed the Israelis, and also using this medium to form the international community that our mission to Israel it's a peaceful move, it's a defensive move, 
and not an aggressive one because the, the security of proper, life and property of our citizens is very dear to the government of Biafra and we wish that if that happens we will be able to create an environment where there will be peace and harmony between the neighboring states of this part of the world. Um, in summary of our press conference today, we are also making it very clear that Biafra will also work together with all African states to make sure that there is peace and stability here in the continent of Africa. And we call on South Africa as one of the leading countries in Africa to help in solving some of the domestic and international conflicts we have in the, Republic, in the continent of Africa. With that, the press conference is uh, about to come to an end, uh, where we, the beer friends today, uh, captioning today's press conference, our mission to Israel. Mission to Israel is about the security of life and property of the Biafran people. And we make no apology to it that we are sending military officers to be trained in Israel because we want to make sure that our people feel safe and secure here in our country. May God bless the Republic of Biafra, may God bless the Israelis, and may God bless the United States of America. And this is the end of our press conference for mission to Israel. And so we shall be making sure that this goes around the world for people to see that the Republic of Biafra is back on since January 15, 1970. May God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you.